Hello again everybody, welcome back to Shelf Life Extension. I'm Alexis and today I'm gonna be talking about The Martian by Andy Weir. This pretty much was a one sitting book. It was the most epic, most amazing thing I've read in a long time. That is not generally something that I read. As you can see by all the tabs here, I really enjoy this book. I absolutely love it. And I'm just gonna talk about it to you guys and hopefully convince you to read it if you haven't yet. So I had this as part of my April TBR, and I'm super glad that I finally read it. So as I've stated before, it's about this astronaut named Mark Watney, who is on a mission to Mars. So pretty much, Earth is trying to colonize Mars again, they're doing all the missions, gathering samples and things, and trying to send it back to Earth so we can figure out ways to, you know, get over there and colonize. So Mark Watney is part of Ares 3, which is the third mission being sent to Mars. So there have been two successful missions done before them. So they get up there and they're doing their thing but then there's this crazy super abnormal windstorm that happens that is like way too much for their equipment to handle so NASA's like hey you guys need to abort like right the hell now because otherwise the spaceship is gonna tip over and it's gonna break and you're gonna be stuck there and you're gonna die so they're like oh crap so they're all like running trying to get to their spaceship right in this windstorm and then Mark gets hit by some flying debris and pretty much stabbed and pushed over a cliff. So everyone's like, oh crap, Mark. Like obviously they're like, there's no way that he could have survived that. They're checking his vitals through like the computer thing that they have and they're like, dude, like there's nothing we can do. Even though they tried to look for him just so they could grab his body and stuff, they couldn't find him because of the windstorm. So they're like, shit, so they had to abort. So they left him, but by some crazy goddamn work of fate, Mark survives. So he survives and he's like, shit. <laughs> and he's like, god dang it. So he's by himself and he goes back to like their, the hab, which was the building that they, were, or the tent thing that they were all living in. And he's like, well, okay, I gotta try and survive. Crap. And there's only like so much food and so much stuff that would last him when he has to make it last so much longer. So pretty much his entire novel is about him trying to survive, trying to get communications back up so he could talk to NASA and tell Earth and everybody that he is in fact alive, and just trying to figure out how he can expand his food sources and make them last longer and overall just not die. So overall, I think that Mark is the perfect, perfect person to have been stuck on Mars by himself. He has the most positive outlook on life and the perfect attitude. Cause in the end, he doesn't take things too seriously. He's like, obviously either I'm gonna die now or I'm gonna die later. My death is inevitable. So he's just like, I'm just gonna do whatever I can. So he starts thinking of ways that he could survive and he's like, it could either go completely right or it can go completely wrong. It's like either it's gonna prolong my inevitable death or it's just gonna make it happen sooner. So he's just like, might as well do it. It's super funny, he always is cracking jokes. He has the perfect sense of humor and he is so smart. And it's so awesome to read about him and his trials to survive. So at first reading this book, you get his daily logs. So he's just like, oh, this is what I did today. Kind of like diary style. And at first I was like, it's kind of off put. I was like, oh my God, is this the whole book? But after a little bit, you start to get different perspectives and different POVs. You also, you get him, you get his other crew who left, you get NASA down on Earth, and then you also get some really cool just third person POVs from him, which makes it super interesting and adds a really interesting dynamic to the story. So as I was reading this, I was like, this is so movie-like, it's awesome. And then I was like, hey, they are making a movie and it comes out in November and I'm so super excited. But yeah, I mean, this guy just gets hit and hit. He is like the most unlucky person ever, but he always takes it in stride and he always tries to move forward and use it to his advantage either way. Even when he doesn't have contact, even when he doesn't have any food, even when he doesn't have any water or atmosphere or breathable air, he figures out a way and he just goes forward. So it's super fun and it's super interesting to read about and it was awesome. I will say there is so much science-y, engineer-y, astronaut-y stuff in here that kind of went over my head, but in the end, you kind of get the gist of what's going on. It doesn't necessarily affect the overall feel and understanding of what's happening. So even though a lot of it, I was just like, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. It didn't stop me from continuing reading and still fully enjoying it. So I stated before, if you really enjoyed Interstellar, the movie, then you will definitely enjoy this book. But as I also said, it's not as melodramatic 
not as dramatic and definitely there's so much comedy and so much humor to this and just a better sense of realism that I will say to this novel which makes me enjoy it even more compared to that movie because you know in Interstellar there's a fantastical element that kind of peeks in there you know with like the fourth dimension or whatever the hell fifth dimension was it whatever like that's getting all into theory and stuff kind of made me did not like <laughs> how that movie ended but this doesn't do that it takes what can be plausible what can legitimately be happening and be used and takes it forward with that so it doesn't ever feel like this isn't legit or isn't possible and it just makes it that much more enjoyable so i'm just gonna read you some of the tabs that i have here just so you can kind of get a sense of mark as a character and kind of why it's so funny. So, if ruining the only religious icon I have leaves me vulnerable to Martian vampires, I'll have to risk it. Henceforth, rover experimental missions will be serious missions. Get it? Dogs. Well, if you don't, fuck you. <laughs> I can't wait till I have grandchildren. When I was younger, I had to walk to the rim of a crater, uphill, in an EVA suit. On Mars, you little shit. You hear me? Mars. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you need to read this book. It is super awesome. I can't wait for the movie to come out and I just really enjoyed it. I, there's like nothing else that I can really say or give to you. Just know that it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Hey, side note, did you know that this is Andy Weir's first novel? Yeah, first novel. And at first he posted it on his blog, I guess. And then everyone was like, no, put it on Amazon or whatever so we could have it on our Kindles and things. And he's like, okay. So we sold it for like a dollar. And then suddenly it was like, oh, hey, can we publish that? Oh, hey, can we make a movie of that? So congrats to you, man. That's pretty freaking awesome. Yes, if you guys haven't read this, please read it. It is super awesome. I super enjoyed it, and I really, really, really want you to read it. Anyways, thanks, you guys, for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Please leave anything that you would like to know or me to clarify or things and things down in the comment section below. Then we can further discuss and it would be super exciting. Otherwise, yeah, that's about it. So yeah, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. See you next time, bye. So, side note, tomorrow, Saturday, April 18th, I have a live stream scheduled for six o'clock Pacific time. If you're on the East Coast, that means nine o'clock for you, and then in between that for whoever else is in the middle. Be there or be square, because it's gonna be fun. If you have any questions for me, leave those down below as well. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>